This video gives you the real reason making the Lakers relevant again, while Braun's regaining of the throne and AD's acquisition last summer are what casual fans strictly take into account. The backbone of this Lakers team's gone completely overlooked in their success, with many even using LA's depth against them. Tonight you'll find out the secrets to the 2020 Lakers' success and why the Lakers' supporting cast isn't a weakness of theirs by any stretch of the imagination. Then stay tuned to find out where the Lakers' one-two punch can ultimately rank amongst the greatest duos of all time. Shout out to Ronto, who answers with Kyrie Irving, saying it seems Kyrie's felt on top of the world since hitting his finals game winner in 2016, and if he wants to win another ring, he's gotta set his ego aside. Thanks to Ronto for the great take and consistent support. Yearly top five and speaks get yearly awards. Tonight's Laker question is coming up. It was an unfamiliarly grueling six-year run for Laker fans for the majority of last decade, where they had a record of 163 wins and 329 losses from 2013-14 all the way through LeBron's first season in 2018-19. In none of those seasons was the purple and gold repped in the postseason. You know the significance of the signing two days after last year's finals ended in Anthony Davis and LeBron's MVP-like play at 35. That's all going to get its respect today. But let's key in on the massive but overlooked impact of LA's veteran pickups from 2019 summer that had revamped seasons in 2019-20. Dwight Howard's first stint in LA back in the 2012-13 season, despite the Lakers barely making the playoffs as the seventh seed, was a chemistryless nightmare. Dwight had productive numbers, but was clearly not 100% healthy, and he, the Lakers hyped up big four of Gasol, Bryant, and Nash, failed to live up to expectations. But six years after an unhappy Dwight left LA to form a lethal one-two punch with Harden, Last summer, of course, he returned to LA. Based off how Dwight had been looking too slow for the modern NBA the last few years, playing with four different teams from 2015-16 to 2018-19, his just unqualified but second-best league-wide field goal percentage and all-around production on the West's first seed is one of the better storylines in the NBA this year. Howard's perfectly played off LeBron and backed up Anthony Davis with swift rotational rim protection, exceptional pick-and-roll defense, as well as extremely efficient scoring and rebounding. Per 36 minutes, he was averaging 14 points, 14 rebounds, plus 2.5 blocks per game. That's Superman Orlando type stuff. But Howard's days of being that slow-footed, washed-up shadow of who he once was are long gone. He's infamously transformed his body to the point where I've called him Skinny Dwight this entire year. You can bet if we get to see 2020 playoff basketball, Coach Frank Vogel, LeBron, and AD are going to give big-time credit to Howard's energy to whatever success they have this summer. More on that potential success coming up. Moving on to the Lakers' undervalued depth on the wing, maybe you've written off Contavious Caldwell Pope as an underachieving draft lottery selection, but it's time to flip the script on that narrative as this man's having a career year. Contavious was a pesky perimeter stopper defensively all season long, with the ability to make sensational reads in the passing lane. Here, he essentially plays with Nikola Jokic to steal a win for LA. Jokic, in his peripheral vision, sees Pope fake like he's going to leave a 40% three-point shooter open in Jeremy Grant in the corner, but was anticipating a pass the entire time and easily snatches the interception. You can give a solid percentage of credit to Caldwell Pope's 25 minutes per game of relentless energy and elite awareness on the wing to why LA has the third best defensive rating in the league through 63 games. Meanwhile, offensively, Contavious is dropping career highs significantly in both field goal percentage and three-point percentage. Like Howard, he's got a just barely unqualified amount of shot attempts, but Pope would be seventh right next to some special young talents in field goal percentage at shooting guard. But most valuable from the seven-year nba -er from Georgia is just his utter two-way intensity and confidence, which dramatically sets a tone for the rest of his teammates. Next, I'm keying in on the memed GOAT, and according to his fan base, legitimately the greatest player of all time. Make it money. Come on. In all seriousness, Alex Crusoe's explosive 2019-20 campaign secured him the reputation as one of the most elusive slashers and springiest dunkers in basketball. That vertical jump combined with supreme lateral quickness make him nothing less than a defensive menace. My favorite clip expressing that best is how he rotates here from no man's land to elevate and perfectly time a block and embarrass Lonzo Ball 
Rarely an attacking player falls like this without any contact on the play, and this clean stuff just goes to show how fundamentally sound and aware the Bald Mamba really is. He wasn't done with Lonzo though, as just over 30 seconds later, Alex stripped Ball at half court and took it in for a patented and one. Crusoe's flashiness yet under control demeanor and legit slashing and defensive talent plus the enthusiastic energy he provides to his team's mentality make him so damn valuable. Danny Green, like LeBron, who tweeted this, has refreshingly been one of the people saying that the season's not getting canceled as he predicted on April 9th that the season will quote unquote for sure come back. Us fans will definitely hold him to it. What we probably do know, however, is that Danny's prediction of the season returning in mid to late May isn't going to happen, but before the suspension, it was a typically damn efficient season for Danny from distance, as that Max is nice emulated form continues to get it done. You hear it time and time again from analysts, but championship experience still gets undervalued by fans in front offices. It's no coincidence Green's won two rings already in his career, and those rings were both more than earned with his lengthy lockdown defense and floor spacing. Unfortunately, Green will continue to get underrated because of his less than 10 points per game, but his leadership and focus in the grind of the game inspires his teammates for sure. Before breaking down where LA's one-two punch could ultimately rank among the all-time great duos, let's flash back to about a decade ago where Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo helped lead the Celtics all the way to the 2012 Eastern Conference Finals and one win at the Boston Garden in Game 6 to make the Finals. Then Prime LeBron orchestrated some history on the road, saving his legacy with back-to-back -back wins and winning Finals MVP. Now Bradley and Rondo are key cogs in a system next to that man who ended their hopes at a ring in 2012. Avery Bradley's hit the peak and downfall of his career since that time, the defensive specialist best season, came in 2016-17 where he averaged 16 points on elite efficiency, but despite he and Rondo sticking around in the league for 9 seasons each since 2012, there's also been moments where they've been on the brink of not getting an NBA contract, including Bradley's move from Boston. He was traded by three teams and on July 6th the Grizzlies waived him. In terms of Rondo's post-Celtics career before touching down in Lakerland, he played for four teams in four seasons. There was his yelling match with Rick Carlisle in 2014-15, becoming Sacramento's king of triple-doubles the following year, then back-to-back -back playoffs in 2017 with the Bulls and 2018 with the Pelicans, where he averaged at least 10 dimes and 10 points. Finally, we skip to July 8, 2019, when the former Celtic backcourt's journey came full circle, as with Rajon entering his second year with the Lakers, they're back competing on a top seed together. That's a storyline I really like on the Lake Show that isn't really talked about too much. Rajon's averaging the sixth most amount of assists off the bench in the league for the Lakers this season, but playoff Rondo's proved to be a different animal. And you forget how good the former All-Star can be when he's in postseason form and locked in. Without those six previously mentioned well-equipped and other than Caruso grizzled veterans that have been around forever that fill out the supporting cast, King James and Anthony Davis wouldn't be competing with the Bucks for the best record in the NBA. Having said that, whether the notoriously dominant one-two punch is converting off lobs, outlet passes, or savvy cuts to the basket, the two superstars are on a string and know where each other are at all times. Braun and AD are also making the best of what they have around them in a major way and helped revamp every player I've broken down today. Whether it's the extra ball handling of Rondo that's helped out LeBron or near 40% shooters like Caldwell, Pope, Markeith Morris, and Danny Green, Avery Bradley spacing it out for Davis, the pieces just all fit perfectly. Tragically, the initially in his career rising stretch for Kyle Kuzma struggled to find a rhythm all season, shooting just 14% from three-point range after the All-Star break which actually goes to show first off his tough adjustment into a smaller role, but also how much potential the Lakers depth has when everyone's cooking. Kuzma could return to his rookie and sophomore efficient self, which could boost the Lakers beastliness even more. When it's all said and done, I expect the James Davis combo to be considered at the very least the top three duo of all time. Kobe and Shaq, Jordan and Pippen will be incredibly tough to outdo. You have to take into account the fact though, LeBron's Benjamin Button-like age reversing. He could very well have three to five years left of looking like he did this past season. That's what happens when you invest hundreds of millions of dollars into your personal basketball fitness every year 
like LBJ does. He's maybe the most fine-tuned athlete this planet's ever seen. Give me your best Laker moment or which team I should break down next and why. Top answer to those questions, either one, in the comments gets next vid shout out for NBA hot takes, predictions, and stories every few days. Be sure to subscribe and hit notifications. And at DFlow Hoops is where I'm active on both Twitter and Instagram. Dope content coming up on there, so be sure to follow me. I'm Adam, aka DFlow. Check out some of my recent lists. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next video.